So now I'm ready to do a little watercolor sketch of Tiny. I have transferred my original drawing over onto my sketchbook paper. And I used carbon paper to do that. And the only thing with carbon paper uh, compared to actually drawing it on here with pencil um, is sometimes it can be a little more difficult to erase. Sometimes once I see my transfer drawing, I notice a few lines that I don't really want there because they're, you know, it's overdoing it. So I want to keep this simple. And if you want to learn about how I did this original drawing, you can go back to an earlier video in this series. So what I do first, I noticed I missed that line, but that's okay, I can fill it in. What I do first is I kind of look and decide if there's too many lines. And I'm always assessing for that through the drawing. And then what I also like to do is just go over it and lighten the drawing up. I'll speed this up here so So there, that's a little lighter. And the reason I do that is so I don't have a bunch of extra lines sticking out in the in the final drawing. Now, this is a stage where I go over it and I'm gonna use a Sharpie pen and I'm gonna pick out those lines that I really like and to have to define kitty cat here. And you just kind of ponder before I think where I'm gonna start and I just go to the place it seems the most obvious to me. I'm not filling in every single line. I'm just kind of getting a feel for it as I go, you know, letting my gut tell me which lines I want to keep. And I'll still be able to see the pencil lines a little bit, so. I want to make sure I preserve my original drawing, and I love the look of pen and watercolor. I felt that I had a few extra lines here and it just didn't really look that great. But I'm, I'm thinking about putting a few in a different direction here. You know, just to go with the flow of the tail going up. In some spots I use flicky lines, like quick flicky lines, and other spots, you know, I do more defined lines. And I just love the look of when I go up and then down for the for the place where the claw is, or the, for the toes, I guess. I just feel it gives a lot of character. And sometimes I just let my pen be a little shaky because it kind of gives it the idea of fur. But again, as I've said before, I don't ever try to draw every hair um, because it's not about every hair. Not for me anyways, and everyone has a different style. And um, some of the lines will end up being lighter and that's ideal. Adds more character. Yeah, I just basically more than anything, I want my lines to give a hint of the type of coat she has. But it's more about her character and expression than anything. Always want to keep that in mind. You have to decide what your drawing is going to be about and then make it about that. You know, she's kind of a, I think what I called her in a previous video is Tiny was kind of scruffy fluffy. She was not that perfect looking, highly groomed cat. She was fluffy, but a little scruffy. You'll learn more about who Tiny was if you watch one of the earlier videos in this series. I want to be extra careful around the ears.
Because the ears got to look right. You know, the hair can be going in whatever direction, pretty much. But the ears got to look like kitty ears. And this part too. I want to be very careful of getting it right. This line's kind of a definition of showing that her face is kind of tucked right down into her mane. And that's kind of part of her character. And I don't, as you'll notice, I don't always follow my lines exactly. If I notice they're a little off, I fix them when I do the pen. And you notice I kind of did a, a backtrack on here because it kind of gives a bit of character to her mouth at the end of her mouth. And this is a Sharpie pen I'm using. Not a Sharpie marker, but a Sharpie pen. I really like them for sketching. They're a cheaper alternative than good artist pens. They're great for sketchbook. These ones you can use, but I don't like them as much because they tend to drop lots of ink. They, they deliver too much ink. I like the Sharpie pens. I'm really going to be careful about what lines I add there. I might not define those lines right now because I think it might it might um, be too much information same as those ones there She's just got a hint of an eye showing here. And you see how my pen kind of went in a little bit there? It almost gives her like, a, you know, a cat look. So I like that. A bit of definition there. I'm going to leave these lines out because I just want more softer watercolor there. And the, her tail, you'll notice I added her tail in. Her tail in the photo is actually tucked behind her, but I really like the way the tail kind of adds to the rhythm here, and it's kind of squashed up against his foot here, so we want that look of it being kind of, you know, around that foot. And you'll you'll learn more about how I get the rhythm and, and how I tweak my original drawing in one of the earlier videos, too, in this series. The tiny series. The sitting pretty cat, I think, is what I called it. I'm going to leave these lines here, too, because they're kind of more shadow lines, and I don't want them standing out starkly. I just want them gentle, same as these lines here. And, you know, I think I just about got it. After I do the watercolor, I will come back in with a pen. But right now, I just want some gentle lines. I don't want them to stand out too much. I want this one, though. And that's a line I had to be really careful with. Looks a little funny now without the line here, but the line here. But that's okay, because um, this is just one stage. We're going to finish up with watercolor. And I'm not really sure what I want to do with her pupil yet, either. It's hardly definable, but I think I will know more once I get a bit of yellow into her eye. Because she was a yellow-eyed cat. And if you watch the earlier series, you will know that the photo I'm working with is not actually tiny. It's just a cat that looks a lot like her. And I have forgotten while I'm doing this that it actually isn't tiny. It looks so much like her. But the photo that I had of her, I don't have very many good photos of her because she lived a long time ago. Um, so I'm using this photo along with the other photo I'm showing you here too, which is the photo of actually tiny. So I think I'm going to leave that at that and then I'll show you what I do next in another video. So I hope you follow along with me. And if you haven't, if you didn't start from the beginning, I encourage you to go back and follow the whole series. Thanks for watching.